In previous years, I've tried to dedicate at least one sermon at Passover to the different symbolic ritual items that are on our Seder table. I think we've covered matzah, maror, the four cups, but I've never talked about the zro'ah, the shank bone. You might be surprised to learn that the placing of a roasted shank bone on the Seder plate has a long and convoluted history. It goes back to the period following the destruction of the temple, where the Seder we know of begins to develop. At that Seder, the people wanted to remember the two special sacrifices that were offered at the temple in Pas- at Passover. The first was called the Pesach, the Passover sacrifice, And the second was called the Chagiga sacrifice, special for the festival. In order to remember those offerings, the custom was to serve two cooked dishes at the Seder. Those two dishes took various forms in various places and at various times. Sometimes they were both vegetarian, sometimes not. Sometimes it was fish, sometimes it was rice. As the centuries moved on, Jews came to view those two cooked dishes as symbols and not necessarily as foods to be eaten. By the 12th century, it became standard practice to remember these two meals on the Seder plate itself. The egg was chosen as the symbol for the Chagiga, to explain why is a sermon of its own, maybe next year. But the roasted shank bone was chosen as the symbol of the Pesach sacrifice. In one sense, the choice of a roasted shank bone is obvious. The Passover sacrifice was roasted meat. The shank bone is roasted meat. But still, we could have chosen any part of the animal Why specifically the Zroah? Well, that word, Zroah, is found in the Torah and in the Haggadah. It is said that God took us out of Egypt, beyad chazaka uvizroah netuya, with a strong hand and an outstretched Zroah, an outstretched arm. That association is what makes the Zroah such a powerful symbol. Yes, it looks like the Pesach sacrifice, but it also hints at the redemption. That latter association was so powerful that as time moved on, no matter what you put on that spot on the Seder plate, whether it was an actual shank bone or a chicken neck, it was still called the Zroa. I'd like to offer an additional teaching on the Zroa, perhaps one you can use at your seders. It's a teaching attributed to Rabbi Israel Salanter in some circles and Rabbi Levi Yitzchak of Berdichev in other circles. The teaching is that the Zroa does not just relate to God's deliverance of the Jewish people, but to Moses' deliverance too at the hands of Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter, if you remember, saw an unusual sight as she was bathing in the Nile, a papyrus basket floating among the reeds. The Torah says that she sent her maidservant to fetch the basket. But the Talmud says that's not true. It was, in fact, Pharaoh's daughter herself who extended her hand out to the basket and her hand reached 60 cubits. Some sources say 500 cubits to get a hold of that basket. When we think of that scene in our heads, we tend to think of a basket floating nearby just next to her, but the rabbis imagined that it was not close at all. She saw it from afar. She reached out 
And even though there was risk, and even though it was far away, she reached the basket and miraculously saved that child's life. It is a great remembrance to have the symbol of the Passover sacrifice on our plates. But the story of Pharaoh's daughter finding that basket, reaching out with her Zroa to grab it, reminds us of other sacrifices that we have to make in our own struggles for redemption. When our ancestors were in Egypt, they had no strength, no hope, no courage, but when they decided to reach out, their situation changed dramatically. And so it is with us. We see often the person we want to be, the relationships we want to have, but we see those images in the same way Pharaoh's daughter saw that basket, too far away, too risky, too dangerous. But our sages chose to give us a message at the Seder table to defeat that pessimism. That Zroa reminds us that if we decide to reach out our arms, our reach can extend far beyond where we would have imagined. And like God performed miracles, so did Pharaoh's daughter and so can we. This year, there is much that is beyond our reach. We have lots of excuses to turn our hands inward, to look after and protect ourselves and let others fend on their own. This may be the impulse, but it is not the message that accords with Pesach. Kol dichfin yete veyichul, kol ditzrich yete veyifsach. Let all who are hungry come and eat. Let all who are in need share Passover with us. Our liberation is tied into our responsibility towards others. Perhaps first displayed in our story by a bathing princess who saved the greatest rabbi there ever was with her Zroa Nituya, her outstretched hand. May we follow her example. Chag Kasher Vesameach.